Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he died, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creations will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. For to this end, Christ has died and lived again, that we might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world, and we take nothing out. The Lord gives, and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal God is our refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the body of our brother Vincent Jeffrey for burial. Our brother was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that he will raise him to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Vincent. We thank you for giving him to us, his family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your bondless compassion, Console us who mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The hymn 427 through all the changes scenes of life.
you could have a losing but theory night. Good afternoon, everyone. Vincent Jeffrey Allen was born on April 26, 1945, in the parish of St. Philip. The third child of Earl and Helena Allen, Humphrey, or Mileage, as he was affectionately known, attended the St. Martin's Boys Primary School and the Industry High School. So accustomed was I to hearing my father being called Jeffrey that I remember being a little shocked uh, after discovering that his first name was actually Vincent. Throughout his work life as a dedicated chauffeur for the Ministry of Health, he had become known to many across the island, especially within our home parish of St. Philip. Operating from the St. Philip Polyclinic for over two decades, his pleasant demeanor and distinctive smile made his face familiar to many whom he assisted. Indeed, Dad tended to make his presence known to almost every person he recognized, and often those of the female persuasion. In other words, he didn't let, he didn't let it pass him. <laughs> his dedication to his chosen profession extended almost seamlessly to his personal life. One only needed to ask dad for transportation or even to deliver an item on their behalf and you could consider it done. I remember many evenings, him collecting me from secondary school in his car and noticing that he was hardly ever alone. Dad had developed an interest in competitive shooting for a while during the 1980s and 1990s so much so that he became an active member of the Barbados Rifle and Pistol Federation. I remember him taking my brother Wendell and I to the shooting range on multiple occasions where we would have had our introduction to the sport. Shooting of his 22 caliber pistol was not his first exploration at developing the skill as they would have initially been honed by shooting from behind the viewfinders of his cameras. Being the one taking photos often means that you're not included in them. But dad provided this as a service to anyone who would have requested it of him. Dad had a few hobbies when we were young. I know he tried his hand at the guitar. I know this because there was a guitar and there were books in the house for a period of time, but that did not last very long. So I am unable to say whether that was a success or if he just decided that that was not for him. But most people would know my father, once you knew him for a while, you would know him to have a camera in hand at any event. And he enjoyed taking photos, and this is something that I have developed as a love the same way. Maybe not taking the same volume of photos as he would have taken, and this is testimony to the amount of photos that I've been going through since his passing. And there are photos of family, and there are photos of people I know and people I don't know. But let's leave that where that is. As I said, we shared our love for photography, and he was willing to take pictures of anyone who wanted a picture taken. When I was younger, I used to look at some of the equipment and I thought it was so strange, these foreign pieces of equipment in, that were in the house. But that is until I then became a photographer and I recognized the need and use for all of these equipment. I would have helped to further my father's passion by supplying him 
when I was of age, supplying here with almost 10 cameras between video and still cameras, which some I know he used and some I am not certain he ever really mastered. But he used photography to chronicle and to showcase us as children so I can look back at those albums and I could see pictures at different stages of our lives. And for me, that is the most important gift and legacy that he left for me, where I can look and I can see cousins, uh, aunts, uncles, everybody. I can see photos of them from when they were younger. And that, to me, is the most precious thing that he would have left for me. It has been said that between my late uncle Cedric and my father that they were the two persons who knew our family tree from top to bottom. They could tell you how everybody was related and they could tell you where most of the persons were living. There was no one else that I can claim. Come, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but no one else had that knowledge of the family and knowing who was related to who. There were many occasions when I would have been with dad uh, sometimes by myself, sometimes with uh, Kerry. And we would always be introduced, and his favorite thing would be, come, come and meet your family. My thing growing up, I used to wonder, but well, why is it that eight out of 10 of the family is all women? It always used to be more women than men that we were introduced to. And if I am lying, anybody can say it different, you are free to speak. Dad was a man who helped and liked to help everyone that he came in contact with. He also was someone who, he did not shy away from meeting people, he did not shy away from introducing people and allowing people to make connections different, you know, outside of the family. So he was always that person that if you wanted to know anything about anybody, not just in St. Philip, because his work would have taken him through the length of breath of Barbados, and he would have had contacts and friends, and even to this day, I still have people coming up and telling me I know you when he was a little boy. I think you can't remember me. And I'd be thinking in my head sometimes, I can't remember what I had for lunch last week. So I ain't really sure how you expect me to remember you from when I am a little boy. But dad was always helping. Uh, one of the persons who would have reached out to me uh, was my, well, I, I say a former neighbor, but he's still my neighbor, uh, where when they moved to Mangrove, my dad would have been instrumental in helping them get in acclimatized to the area. And also uh, the son that was there, he would always remind me, you know, your dad is a special man because his sister had asthma. And when she got asthma attacks late at night, he would be the one to rush her to the hospital and for that, Peter never forgot. To this week, he reminded me, your dad was a good man. I have also heard other stories, other uh, interludes where people have been telling me about what he would have done for them. And he was not somebody who would walk around and say, well, I helped this body or I helped the next person. He was a person that would quietly go and once he has a smile, once he has you know, know he has done something good, that was enough for him. And 
that is one of the things that I really admired him and loved him for. He really showed us, even if he didn't show us and tell us in words, he showed us love and how to treat people. So from that, I always remember, you know, it is not about making a name or it's not about, you know, telling people whatever. It's about you just helping and being the kind person that you can be. He had a love for puzzle books. Uh, I was reminded of this only today. And this is a testimony to, in his house, there were many books, some that look brand new, but when you go through them, every page is done. So he just used to get the books and do them, and that was it. He would literally go through a book in a day or less. My Aunt Golda, on hearing of the passing of Dad, when I spoke to her after we had exchanged some tears, she then reminded me of something that he used to do. He would never introduce her as Golda. He would always introduce her as his baby sister, up to a few months ago, when we had another funeral in the family of my other aunt, he did this up to then. So that was something that she said she will surely miss. And, you know, that's something that I told her, when I remember, I will call you, I will call you the baby. Don't mind, you're my aunt, but I will call you that. Humphrey, or mileage, as those who knew him for a long time would, would refer to him as, was someone who did not keep still. And even after he had retired, Daddy would always, or most of the time, be found in the environs of Six Roads. At one point when we had the pandemic uh, in full rage, I called and I said, Daddy, you know, uh, the authorities are asking for the older people to stay home. And his reply to me was, for what? So that was my attempt to try to ask him to just stay off the road. And the answer I got, which was emphatic in my opinion, was, I doing me. So, as I alluded to just now, Six Roads was where you could find Daddy four out of five days of the week. Whether it be Shafek, whether it be Emerald City. Uh, recently I started seeing with Fashion Nation <laughs> and the Polyclinic. I would pass and I would see him there sitting on the outside and I would be like, I don't know if I can ever get to that point where I could be anywhere and I just want to come and sit down and just be out and about like that. But that was him. That was, that was his way of being with people. That was his way of handling how life what was unfolding for him. So I realized it was pointless trying to, you know, do anything different. I recall on a few occasions, I would be in Emerald City and I would get paged. And the first time I, it happened, I was like, well, why am I getting paged in a supermarket? Uh, then to realize that was his way, once he knew I was there, where you is in the supermarket? So it would be, Wendell Arlene, could you come to the front desk or could you come to the customer area? So after a couple of times I knew, well, yeah, that means daddy here. So, Jeffrey was really a person who loved to engage people. He really loved to be among people. He spent quite a bit of time when I was younger 
in this church, in different serving in different capacities. And I just wanted to mention that. And I know he would have some long standing friends within the church community. Daddy was a protector also. And there was one instance where, this is years ago, we had gone to watch Mr. Harding burn. And I was on his shoulders. And rocks and bottles started to fly. And in one motion, Daddy took me off his shoulders and started running to safety. My feet didn't touch the ground. And there are other instances where, you know, he would have come to, I don't want to say a rescue, but things like one time I had somebody who was trying to bully me. And when the truck pulled up by St. Martin School, everybody stopped me and looked around. Because everybody knew my father always smiling. My father always happy and jovial. So when they come and they see no smile on his face, everybody stop because they want to know well, what happened here. So daddy was that person. He would not necessarily come and hug you up, but he showed us how he loved us. And there was no one more, there was no daddy more proud than Jeffrey. Because if any time I would be in any environment, the first thing I would hear is, oh, come, you know my big son, come and meet my big son. And you would be like, daddy, you introduced me to this person already about two or three times. But he just loved it. He just loved to know I have big sons and I'm going to show persons my children. And these things, when you were younger, you used to be like, oh, I feel like I'm on show. But as I got older, I understood the importance of doing things like that and being able to say that you have, you're proud that you have children that you can look at and you can say, these are, these are my children. I would just like to thank everybody who is here, who came, those who called, and those who sent well wishes. I know sometimes my phone would not have been answered. This is, you know, funerals can be overwhelming. So I just say thank you for all those who would have come and, you know, lend support. Now it is that time where Daddy can now rest fully. It is a time where we mourn but it should also be a time where we rejoice for the life and for the legacy that he left. I am very happy that he is in a better place now where he does not have to worry about earthly things anymore and he can go and rest with the Lord. I just want to also say thank you for all the support from family, especially from my brothers and from my aunts and uncles, cousins, and everybody in general. And I just want to say, Daddy, I love you. I will miss you. We will all miss you. But we know that you are in a better place. Thank you all. You want to finish? God, now it's time for you to rest. We know that you would much rather be here with us, but we all only have a limited time in this existence. We know that you have touched many hearts and helped many along your life's journey. We know that you've put in the miles. Now it is time for one more ride. We love, we love you and miss you, Dad. Rest in peace.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant Jeffrey. And we pray that having opened to him the gates of larger life, you will receive him more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, he may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ, O Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good afternoon. The scripture reading will be taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is, what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a, and a time to gather stones together a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen their business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from beginning to the end. Here ends the scripture reading.
This is the second reading, a, working, a reading from the Word of God, written in the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The word of the Lord.
Please be seated. Allow me to take this opportunity on behalf of the priest in charge here at St. Martin, the Reverend David Yard, the altar servers, the Eucharistic ministers, the choirs, the members of the entire St. Martin's Church family, and also on behalf of the Reverend Audrey Griffith, the rector, the priest in charge of Holy Cross, who is unable to make it here this afternoon. And also on behalf of one of our beloved brothers, Jeffrey's God children, Trinequa Pierce, who is also unable to attend. Allow me to extend the condolences to the family members. On behalf of all, we've all known Humphrey or Mileage, as some of us will affectionately know him as, for a very long time, and we know that, that his passing has created a void in your life. The passing, no doubt, will linger for quite a while. But I want you to be comforted knowing that the Lord that we serve has a plan for each one of you. Only he knows the hour. Only he knows the time when we will all be called home. When our sojourn on this earth has come. Allow me to speak to you in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sat this afternoon and we listened to the reading of the first Bible lesson, which was taken from Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. For those of you who work in agriculture, you will have to be well in tuned to know which time of the year is right to plant a particular crop or produce in order for it to yield the bounty which you so desire. We are fortunate here in the Caribbean where the sun shines almost daily and the temperatures soar from 25 to 31 degrees. But what about those persons who live in North America, in Europe, and those quarter countries where they experience four different seasons? A season called spring, a season called autumn, a season called summer, and a season called winter. The farmer must know which season is suited to plant a particular produce. So my question is, what does that mean to us as human beings? And how do we relate a season to our respective lives? Has anyone present ever asked the Lord or had a conversation with him in order to find out what season were we destined to enjoy or to experience? Has anyone had that conversation? And I'm not speaking about the seasons I mentioned just now, the spring, the summer, and the autumn, and the winters. I'm speaking about the seasons of life. And if you are listening to the first Bible reading, you will understand to what I am referring. Each of us, each of us have a season in order to do certain things. 
We are all born to someone. That was your parents' season to enroll a bundle of joy into this world. Then we were nourished, schooled. We had time to play. And then we had to go and find some work. Eventually, we had our own relationships from which we then had our own families. And that cycle continued to evolve. All of these things which we've been through are various seasons of our lives. And someone might call it destiny, which in fact, it truly is. It is also the period for which events or activities occur. Hence, the particular season which we experience. So each of us have our own season or our own seasons to relish. Hence, the persons we are today. What about our goodly brother, Jeffrey? He was no different to any of us. Like us, he was born and he was raised in the Christian family. And he had that Christian upbringing. Was at school, and you heard he went to school at St. Martin's. And what you may not have heard is that he also was churched right here at St. Martin. He became an altar server during his early childhood days. Eventually, he too finished school and went in search of a job. As he too wanted to continue a season which the Lord had given him. And eventually, he found a job with the Ministry of Health, as we know it today, and Wellness at the St. Philip Polyclinic, where he remained for a very long time, helping all walks of life. This was the man who we have come to love, who we've come to say our goodbyes, a man who loved people. And if you heard and listened to the eulogists, his son said he loved to help people. And when he was out and about doing the government work with the Ministry of Health, he found time to engage and to interact with all walks of life. He never placed himself on a pedestal above anyone else. But don't let that smile fool you, because he's a very serious person. And if he said he was going to help, rest assured, he would help. He enjoyed driving, and he found solace in doing so. So it was no surprise when he retired that he returned to where he enjoyed the better part of his life. He returned to St. Rose. You can go any part of St. Rose and you will see him. And he was always willing to help no matter what was the request of him. Now, during that time, although he had retired, he was still serving right here at the altar of God. And therefore, all of his directions came through the guidance of the Lord Almighty. He was a sort of person that he always wished and wanted to help and give back to others. 
Remember, my friends in Christ, that we too have to navigate our various seasons. To do so in stride is to do so with a good heart. As the season that we may be venturing through, that too must pass. And no doubt you will know that once that season has gone, you cannot get it back. You only get one chance of going through a particular phase in your life, and there's no turning back. So you have to accept each season or occurrence within your life as there is no rewind, no turning back. And that is what the Lord has destined for each of us. So I'm not speaking, remember, of the seasons that the Europeans enjoy. I'm not speaking of the summery seasons or the rainy seasons that we here in the Caribbean enjoy. I'm speaking about the seasons of life, our destiny. And each of us have seasons that we must go through. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted. So here now, my beloved Jeffrey has come to his season, which the Lord has destined for him. That time which he had today. The time in which he was called home to be with his father. As written in the good book of Matthew chapter 24, beginning at verse 34. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all things I have destined have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. But what about the day? or the hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. So let me just reinforce that by saying to you, you neither know the day or the time that the Lord will come for you. So as it is written in the good book of Matthew and Ecclesiastes, Jeffrey went through all of the seasons which were destined for him. A seed was planted and Jeffrey was born. He went through the various seasons of life as he grew. During this cycle, he kept God in his pocket. And it's not only by coming to church and putting on a robe, but that was the man who he was. He always made sure God was with him in everything that he did. During this cycle, although he might have become ill, he still remembered his God. He still came to church, and whether he adorned the robe and served at the altar, or had on his suit and sat in the nave of the church, the point remains, he always placed God in front of him. That was his time to break down, and his time to heal. His ailment never got the better of him, as he always kept God close. And this is an example that we, my dear brothers and sisters, should follow. 
For no matter what we might go through, no matter what challenges we may face, or what ailments that we may be experiencing, you must always remember, God is by your side. And only he will bring you through. And during that period of time, we've called upon God's help to assist us with those various challenges, those various seasons which we have to experience. But then here comes the real question. And I want you to listen and ask, answer the question for yourselves. The question I want you to answer is will we be ready when the Lord comes to you and say, it is time? You need to answer that question to yourself. Because remember what I said a short while ago in accordance to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36. No one knows the day or the hour. Only the Father. If you have knowledge of that time and that day or the place when he will come, do you think, honestly, do you think that you will have sufficient time to put your affairs in order? Do you believe that you will be able to don the most finest of clothing and sit down beside the telephone or go in your patio or go wherever where you have solace and wait for that call from the Lord who's going to say, it's time. If you have that knowledge, would you be prepared? I am sure that you will actually want to try. Because that's what we are, humans. We want to try to be prepared, to put our house in order and say our relevant goodbyes to who we have to say them to, make sure our wills are all up to speed and all our debt collectors have been paid off so that our families won't have to be worrying about that. We'll try to put all our orders, all our fears in order. But you want to know something? When that gentleman from upstairs comes down, although you know the time, although you know the day he's going to come, when he does finally come, I will bet each and every one of you here this afternoon, you're going to say to him, give me a minute. Just give me a minute. I ain't ready yet. Let me just go in, back inside and say my goodbyes. I just got this one thing to do before I leave. And the reality is, even though we knew of the time and the day that we were going to be called, you still won't be ready. And that's human nature. That is human nature. So that's why the reasons why the good book tells us that no man, none of us knows the hour when the Lord shall come. Hence, according to Ecclesiastes, there is a time to die. And only the Lord himself knows that time. And sadly, this is the time for our good friend Humphrey. He was called and he could not say, I'm not ready. But I believe if I know Humphrey well, he would have said, Lord, here I am. Your son awaits. Because he was a Christian-minded person. And I'm sure he had put his affairs to a certain extent in order. 
A time to be ill, a time to heal, a time to break up, and a time to build up. Then there's a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. So let me just have a conversation briefly with the family members. Remember, you have time to mourn. Then you're going to have a time to dance. Which therefore leads to that time that you're going to be healing and merry once again. That will be your season. Now is the morning season. And as the morning season pass, you will feel a little more cheerful. And once that season of cheerfulness gets to that ending aspect, you're going to get to the point where you're going to be very merry and start dancing and enjoying your life to the fullest. That's not to say you're going to forget about your family, your father, your uncle, or your cousin. But you're going to go through that season. And there's nothing wrong with you. I'm sure, having learned of his passing, when that news came, that your first reaction was to shed a tear. That began the season for your mourning. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with openly crying, as this is natural. So there is no need to hide. This morning season will stay with you for as long as you unwittingly want it to remain with you. Because you know what? You have no control over that. That pain, that hurt is going to remain within because of the loss, that void. And the only person that has that control to bring you out of it is our Father. Now remember, this is your season to mourn. So my words of comfort to you and also to the entire church present here this afternoon who've come to bid our dearly departed friend farewell from this earthly pilgrimage. He lived through all the seasons which the Lord destined for him. And now his journey has come to an end, but it does not stop there. As he is, has embarked on another season, the season of life continues beyond life. And we know that his journey on earth, he has interacted with many of us, and he has touched each of us, and that season with him for us on earth has now come to pass, while his season with our Lord and Savior has now begun. I therefore implore each of you here today to reflect on the few words which I have regurgitated from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, as he wants you to embrace the experiences of all the seasons which he, the Lord, has destined for all of us. As you have your season and a purpose under the heaven. You too have a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to harvest. You too have the time to be ill and a time to heal. A time to break up and a time to build up. 
You also have the time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. So I truly implore of you the same way in which Jeffrey has lived in accordance with those two Bibles readings, Matthew chapter 24 and Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Remember your season in life also will come to an end. Therefore, I hope you will be weary of what Matthew has taught us here this afternoon. Get your house in order. As no one knows that day or the hour, that our season will come to an end. I have spoken to you with the words of the Lord, our Savior, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now stand and reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 5 in your booklets. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, O Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered on the Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. And he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in judgment. Please be seated. Intercession form C is found on page six in your booklet. After each petition, your response will be hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn, the family of the late Vincent Jeffrey Ali, we commemorate the departed, Vincent Jeffrey Allen. Let us pray with confidence to God our Father, who raised our Lord Jesus from the dead for the salvation of all. Grant, Lord, that your servant may know the fullness of life that you have promised to those who love you. Lord, in your mercy, be close to those who mourn. Increase their faith in your undying love. Lord, in your mercy. May we be strengthened in our faith, live the rest of our lives in fellowship with your Son, and be ready when you call us to the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Show your mercy to the dying strengthen them with hope, and fill them with the peace and joy of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, we commend all people to your unfailing love, that in them your will may be fulfilled, 
and rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we share with them in your eternal kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please turn. <coughs> Trusting in the love and mercy of God, we have to pray for the repose of the soul of our beloved brother, Vincent. For Vincent, life is now ended and death itself has passed. He was received into the church, the community of faith, through the medium of water. And using that same medium, Mother Church now bids farewell to our beloved son. Although this congregation gathered in sorrow, it will disperse in the hope that the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us unite our hearts and voices in this final act of submission and release. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. Yes, our Lord, be no more. Not your sight, but life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of mankind. And we are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. For so did you ordain when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust we shall return. All of us go down to the dust, yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Their sorrow and pain are no more, neither sight, but life everlasting. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy, our, our Father, Father what in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, for it is in heaven. Give us day our day bring, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trust us against us and lead us not into temptation deliver us from evil for the king's kingdom the power and the glory are yours and ever Amen. let us commend our brother vincent to the mercy of god our maker and redeemer deliver your servant vincent O sovereign lord christ from all evil and set him free from every bond, that he may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitations, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Vincent. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy in the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Rest eternal grant unto Vincent, O Lord. Be he and all the faithful departed through the tender mercies of God. Rest.
Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving light to those in the tomb. The Son of Righteousness is gloriously risen, giving light to those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death. The Lord will guide our feet in the way of peace, having taken away the sin of the world. Christ will open the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in him, in his name, saying, Come, O blessing of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Into paradise may the angels lead you. At your coming, may the masters receive you and bring you into the holy city, Jerusalem.
Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through his indwelling spirit. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Write this, Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help? But to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins. Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins, and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. In showing certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our brother Vincent, and we commit his body to the ground, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, earth to earth. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother Vincent and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, O Lord, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the spirits, the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for the bereaved. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant to him, O Lord. And let light perpetual shine upon him. Ye and all the faithful departed through the tender mercies of God. Rest in peace. Amen.
sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share Jesus knows Thank you, Lord. You are my solace.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. The Lord, the praise of your people. As we remember before you, Vincent, our brother, and grant that we who confess your name on earth may with him be made perfect in the kingdom of your glory through Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. The Lord bless him and keep him. The Lord make his face to shine upon him and be gracious unto him. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon him and give him peace. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, the Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Thanks Amen. be to God. On behalf of the grieving family, we'd like to thank all of you for coming. Do stay safe and do get home safe. Thank you. Amen.